Hi everyone, I'm Shane Stevenson, uh, Director of Museum Collections and Curator here at the Buffalo Naval Park. And hopefully you've watched that, uh, the armaments of the USS The Sullivans. And so now I'm standing on the fantail and we're going to talk about the armaments on the USS Little Rock. Alright, so she had a lot more of just visible firepower during her Cleveland class configuration. Uh, you would see a lot more 6 inch guns, a lot more 5 inch guns. But for right now, we're going to be focusing on these big blue Talos missiles. Then we have the one 5 inch turret, uh, the uh, double barreled 5 inch, and the triple barreled 6 inch. So we'll be talking about those. Alright, so for the Talos missile though, this was added in 1960. Uh, she went through a conversion from 57 to 60. And of course, this is the change from World War II. Right? So this was there to combat the jet presence, the MiGs and the Russians and the other enemies uh, through their use of jets. All right, we got the 5 inch 38s, we got the uh, 6 inch guns here, but they would never stop a jet. All right, so that's what these were built for. Our whole aft superstructure, all right, on the Little Rock was converted and dedicated to this uh, fire uh, control system. All right, so the Talos missile, all right, they'd have a missile house, which is right on the main deck here, where they stored about 50 of these missiles. And what you see here is they would come out from that, uh, butterfly door onto the launcher while the missile house would store and assemble and prep the actual missiles for launching. They'd come out onto the launcher and then they'd be ready to be fired. All right, so this was a two-part system here. You can see there's a little break right here. All right. So this is almost, if you want to call it, if you want to think of it, it's almost like the space shuttle. All right, so they, that lower half of the missile would be the booster. It would get the missile as far away from the ship within five seconds and then it would fall off. And then that air would be coming through the missile itself which would then spark the ramjet which would then take it off and go towards its target. Alright, this thing would travel at Mach 2.5 so that's pretty quick and it had a, a, a travel a uh, radius of about 50 to 60 miles. Now these were surface to air, right? You'd think, wow, this could do a lot of damage if uh, these hit land. But these were surface to air, again, to take away the threat from uh, the jets that were created uh, after World War II. All right, so they would be able to travel and connect with jets that would be going 500, 600, 700 miles an hour. All right, so a lot of space was dedicated in the USS Little Rock's conversion from 50 not, 57 to 60 for this. And if you take a look right there, this is the aft superstructure. All right, you'll see a series of dishes. All right, two of the dishes, the smaller ones, you can't really see the top one. But these smaller dishes, the first one you can see right down here, all right, on the right there. All right, now that was for guiding the missile itself while it was in the air. There actually is another one on top of the drums, all right, that you can see here, these two large drums. So we had two uh, radar dishes to control the missile while she was in the air. These two larger drums that you see that everyone asks what they are, all right, when you come aboard, that's what usually people say is, wow, look at those drums, right? But those would be f to track the target while the missile was in the air. So you'd have two uh, radars dedicated to tracking the target, two that would be able to manipulate the missile while it was in the air and off the ship. And again, this whole superstructure dedicated uh, to the Talos missile system. There were also three Cleveland class cruisers that uh, were with the Terrier missile system and they were the Providence class. All right, so this is the Galveston class. This was the Galveston CGL-3, USS Little Rock CGL-4, 
and the USS Oklahoma City CGL-5. The Providence class was made up of the USS Providence, the USS Springfield, and the USS Topeka. And those carried the Terrier, not Talos, missile system. So out of the 27 Cleveland class uh, cruisers, six were converted into the Talos and uh, uh, Galveston and Providence class. And now the USS Little Rock is the only one remaining in the world of the Cleveland or the Galveston slash Providence class. All right, so when you come aboard, you're only not only stepping on history from 1945 to 1949, and then again from 1960 to 1976, you are stepping on the last ship of her class anywhere in the world. All right, so we got to head forward, and we're going to take a look at those, the twin-mounted 5-inch uh, and the triple-mounted 6-inch. So follow me. All right, everyone, so now I'm standing on the bow of the USS Little Rock, and we are looking at the uh, twin-mounted 5-inch 38. So if you looked at the video regarding uh, the Sullivans, she had single mounts 5 inch 38s, but here we have dual mount or twin mounted 5 inch guns on the USS Little Rock. Now when she was in her original configuration, they would have had, if you can believe it, they would have had six of these turrets. One right here you see on the center line in the forward uh, superstructure one on the O1 level on the F superstructure, and then they would have had uh, four on the waists. All right, so on the sides, midships, uh, what you call like the, the, the waistline. She also would have had uh, four six inch turrets for a total of uh, 12 six inch barrels. But for the five inch 38, we've already learned, we've seen some of the specs with the, um, USS the Sullivans, but again, they would be able to travel about uh, 10 miles, would be uh, probably their max distance. Proximity fuse shells, 55 pounds. Uh, so this is uh, the last one uh, on the USS Little Rock. So one of the questions we get quite a bit is, where is everything in relation to her original uh, configuration. Because it's really interesting, if you were to look at a Cleveland class, she has her two uh, uh, six-inch guns right on the main deck, and then above that is the twin five-inch. But right now we only have the a single six-inch and a single five-inch. So one of the questions is, well, which, one did, which turret of the six inches did they remove? Did they remove the forward one? Did they remove the middle one? Well, actually, and I usually like to say it like this with a flourish, like a slow-moving glacier, when they redid the superstructures, when they reconfigured the superstructures in 1957 to 1960, this superstructure became a lot more uh, large. I know that's not the scientific term for it, but it grew greatly compared to an original Cleveland class forward superstructure. So what we're actually seeing here with this, and you see the superstructure right behind her, this is actually where the mount two of the six inch triple barreled turret would be. And for the handling room, they just converted the handling room into the five inch. So what we would have seen is right here would have been the second six inch triple barreled turret. Behind that would have been this five inch. And then behind that would have been the forward superstructure in the Cleveland class configuration. So again, the superstructure lengthened and grew in height uh, during her Galveston class configuration. So that answers that question, because a lot of people do ask that. Well, what's the turret that you see right here for the six inch? Is that the first one? Is that the second one on the bow? 
This actually still is the first, and that became where the second six inch uh, was located. Let's check out that six inch. I've talked about it quite a bit, so all I have to do is rotate the camera. And there she is there. All right, so there's been some talk. This is sometimes considered the last six inch uh, turret left in the world. And then you hear, well, there's, there's one in Europe uh, that I have not verified, but I would believe someone if they said that. So for the six inch, you really had, this packed a, a, a much greater punch. So that even though the projectile almost looks the same as the five inch, Obviously, it's one inch caliber larger, and but it, you can see some right there, right? It still kind of looks the same in terms of height, but it is twice the weight. So even though only, it's only like one inch wider and potentially a couple inches uh, greater in height, this is 110 pounds, where the five inch projectile is 55 pounds. All right, so they really pack a lot more weight into these six inch uh, turrets. And as I said, she was triple barreled. All right, so the Little Rock never fired a gun in anger. All right, she didn't go to Vietnam, um, you know, during that. She was the flagship of the Sixth Fleet and the Second Fleet for a while, which is the North Atlantic and the Mediterranean Fleet. So she saw some action with tensions in the 60s um, you know, from different country to different country, but she never fired these weapons in anger. They would use them, to, of course, for the gun crews to train. Uh, you know, there would have been about 22 guys in this turret, uh, and they would have been training and firing, but it was never against an enemy or uh, any beachhead or land-based enemy. All right, so when you come here to the U USS Little Rock, you can see those 110-pound projectiles, all right, firing out of the three, uh, the triple turret there. And then you can just imagine that these would be double the weight, even though they look the same, almost the same, as the five-inch shell. So that's the USS Little Rock. She had a lot more weaponry as a Cleveland class in terms of just turrets and firepower, but, but you really can't beat the Talos missile system. All right, so the Talos missile system, uh, the twin five inch, and the triple six inch. Oh, she also had chaff launchers and things like that. I did not cover that, but she would have chaff launchers. And in the 40s, apparently, a star shell that was fired went right into the Missouri, killing, unfortunately, a few sailors. That might be another video down the road, though. I hope you enjoyed this video of the USS Little Rock. If you like this video, please subscribe, ring the bell, check out other uh, social media sites. And again, we always appreciate your support. Thanks so much.